Volkanovski and Makhlchev. Guys, I'm half pissed off at you. And I have been for a while. You don't know what you have here. And one of the reasons that you don't know, right? I mean, it, it's entitlement to a bratty kid whose parents thought they were doing well by him and spoiled him. And he grew up with a sense of reality that was off, and he also couldn't appreciate things. He couldn't appreciate things because he never longed to have them. He never worked to have them. He barely even asked if he could have them, and there's the parent bringing it into the bow, right? You know these types. What we dreamed we had done to us, what we'd love to do with our kids. It can be a really slippery slope, but entitlement is a real thing, and there's also something true to the human psychology. If you don't work for something, you can't appreciate it. Right? Yes? Yes, everybody? Makhlchev and Volk fell in your lap like no title fight in history. Now, this is very argumentative of the biggest title fight in history because champ champ status is eligible. And there's only five, five guys ever, one gal ever that even got champ champ opportunity. But then you have the number one rank. See, there's a beautiful thing that Volkanovsky said. Volkanovsky, when he got face-to-face -face with Islam, you guys remember this? When he was face-to-face -face with Islam, he patted. Islam had the belt on his shoulder that he just won. And Volkanovsky patted it. And he said, you put this up, and I will put up the number one pound-for-pound -pound ranking. All right, well, see, now, now, now we're getting closer. Now we're, now, we're, now we're getting back to even here, aren't we? No soft place to fall. Right, all the champions want a soft place to fall. They need to be an underdog. They need to leave the weight class. Say, ah, these guys are a little bit too big for me, but by golly, I'm going to go out there and try. They don't. They don't like to burn their their ships, and they're not going to put up anything or risk anything. Volk did, and as simple as that might sound, guys, it annoys me. that this fight isn't appreciated to the level that it should be. And I contend that the reason it's not is because it was handed to you. It was a gift. You didn't work for it. You didn't go to the forums. You didn't go to the sites. You didn't take to the Twitter sphere and beg and manipulate and tag Dana White and tag Sean Shelby. You didn't do any of those things. You, you didn't earn this. This fell in our lap. We were told at one point, guys, I can't confirm this. I can't confirm this, but there's a lot of smoke around this. We were told by Charles Oliveira's coach, Lima, came out and told us that Oliveira in the locker room was offered that rematch. Now, when I say locker room, that is just meant to say after, after the fight. But why that's relevant? It means the UFC had the face-off with Makhlchev and Volkanovsky. If that rumor is true that Oliveira was offered the rematch, they had that face-off, they had that agreement, they faded a black, they rolled the credits. They had the undefeated against the nearly undefeated, the champion versus the champion, number one versus number five. They had all of it. Thought they didn't have a damn thing. Didn't move right on like it never happened. Go out, bring Charles in there, get these two. I mean, that, that wasn't a, a massively hyped fight to start with. I, I don't know why we're going to rematch the thing. But if you are going to rematch it, then that means you like that idea more than you like this idea. Come out, tell the world, oh, hey, those two boys having fun. You know, you, you know we do our own matchmaking here. Who are they to go out and make a, a fight? You know, nice try. Ha ha. Is that, is that what we're going to do? Is that almost where we were, guys? Were we almost going to unfry that egg, unfry that face-off? Were we almost going to come out and tell the world, tell the Lebetards and the Romes and the sports centers, hey, those guys got carried away. One's at 45, and he's going to be fighting Josh Emmett soon. One's at 55, and he's going to do a rematch with Charles, exactly like they should do. And we were just, and none of this happened? Is that where we were going to go? Even for a minute, even for a moment of time. And I only bring that to speak to my idea. My entire thesis here 
is that we're not appreciated because we didn't earn it. Every now and then, know how to accept a gift. And that's a very important thing. It's easy to give a gift, right? You feel good. You brought them something. They're going to be happy. You're going to get thanked. It's very easy to give a gift. You have to know how to accept one. Don't ever be the guy who goes, oh, I, I showed up empty-handed. I'm so embarrassed. I can't accept. No, take the gift. Tell them how beautiful it was. Open them up. Tell them how much that, that thought meant to you. You have to know how to accept things. You guys are not wrong to enjoy this. You are not wrong to be counting this down. I was on Volkanovsky's YouTube last night, which he's just doing a great job, by the way. Great job. And he was talking about being in a bulking phase. Guys, there is, is few things more uncomfortable in life than weight, whether you're going up or down. Most have never done that. Most have never had to go and diet and pull weight off where you had to do it, right? So very unique in the sport. Now, Volk's on the other side where he's got to gain weight. Oh, I had to do that one too. Oh, oh, it, you're, it's sickening. It is sick. You know that feeling you have after Thanksgiving? But, but, but like now you need a nap. Like, yeah, man, I got to do the pants. And you, you, you need a little bit of time. Let me put my feet up here. Maybe go for a walk in about an hour. Help digest. You know that feeling? You live your life like that. It's awful. You have to get up earlier in the morning than you had planned. Doesn't matter if you get up at 5 in the morning. You will now have to get up at 4.15 in the morning. You need an extra 45 minutes to get calories in. You like to go to bed at 10 p.m. You will now be going to bed at 11 p.m. You need that extra hour to get calories in. And Volk was talking about this. He's got a company that helps him, right? They sent it right to him. You've seen that, that prepackaged meal. But he was going through it. Oh, my good Lord. Oh. You know, he's got to get his nutrients in. So you, you got salads that would just fill up a small army. He's got to get that down. That's before he even gets into the pastas with the organic low-sodium sauces. That's before you even get into that because he's not looking to put fat on. So this it's a very tricky game. If you want to put on weight, and by the way, he's only got to do a few pounds, right? You're talking about 10 pounds here. Boy, if he could go put on six and a half, if he could go put on seven, but of all muscle, that's what he's going to go try to do. But the way that you do that, it's not just about cal. You're not eating donuts and, and, and then, you know, pizzas and just trying to put the size on and then take it off later. No, you put it on in good weight, which means you eat really good food. It just means you got to eat a lot of it. It was a very fascinating thing. But it spoke to the dedication of Volkanovsky. I watched some of his training. I watched him sparring up here with a guy and Craig Jones comes in and levels him from the side. Just blasts him with a double leg to take him down. So Volk's dealing with this guy. Oh, and now I'm wrestling. It's real interesting stuff. Henry and Cejudo comes out and says, there's nothing that Vol Volkanovski could do to beat Islam. It's going to be nothing but good old-fashioned Dagestani wrestling. This is what Henry Cejudo said. And you know what? I know the effectiveness of wrestling. I am a wrestler. I would never turn on my own craft. But I will also share with you, it was at the turn of the century, guys, 2000, 2002 at the latest, that being able to take a guy down is not enough. There's only two athletes in the modern era where being able to take a guy down was enough. George St. Pierre and Khabib. Now, Islam might be that damn good. I'm just here to share with you. Dagestan and Rasul, what difference does it make? I mean, go out and start in this position. If you're, you're a world champion, you can't get up off the bottom. I mean, at some point, you got to start giving world championships back. There can't be anything that you can't do. If you're ranked number you're not only the champion, you're undefeated, but you're also ranked number one. You're ranked in front of everybody else. There cannot be a position where you cannot defend yourself effectively. There just can't. Now, there could be a mess, and there could be chaos, and it's back and forth, and it's exchanges, and we got to bring the judge in. There cannot be. If you were ranked number one in the world, tell me another guy. Tell me another guy throughout history that was rated number one on the pound for pound, but he had a position he had to avoid. Tell me anyone that was ranked number one, but if you get him in a tie clinch, it's all over. He didn't know what to do. But you get him in a half, it's never happened before. So we either have a massive issue with our rankings committee, or you are on the heels of a gifted, non-earned, greatest title fight ever.